Welcome back to Questing Beast. Today we are going to be doing a preview of the Dolmenwood campaign setting, which is my favorite D&D setting of all time. I have been singing the praises of this thing for years. It's been in development for like 10 years, and it is finally coming to Kickstarter in the form of three hardback books, 800 pages total, with one of the most complete and rich and fleshed out hex crawls that I have ever seen. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just making this because I'm a huge fan of Dolmenwood and I really want it to succeed. I'll be looking through the PDF that Gavin Norman, the creator of Old School Essentials, uh, sent to me. This is his project. And I'll be taking a look at some of the uh, most interesting bits of it and what makes it really stand apart from the other D&D settings and the other campaign books that I've read in the past. If you wanna check out the Kickstarter, which is live right now, the link is in the description right down there below. All right, let's jump in. Dolmenwood comes in three books. You have the campaign book, which I have right here, the player's book, and the monster book. Let's start with campaign books. This gives you a good overall view of the setting as a whole from the game master's perspective. Here's our table of contents, and I should point out right away that this is a complete game. You do not have to own Old School Essentials or any other version of BX or just D&D in general in order to play this game. All of the rules are going to be contained in one of those three books. The system is basically BXD&D. It's a slightly modified version of Old School Essentials. Your OSC characters are going to work just fine in this. Um, the special classes and some of the special spells and rules uh, that are implemented in Dolmenwood just add to the flavor of the particular setting. Uh, I think the only big rule change is that some of the characters have a skill system, which is just a D6 system. So you roll a D6 and you're trying to get, you know, one in six or a two in six or a three in six chance of a particular thing happening. So some classes have that, but apart from that, it's basically OSE. Here is a map of the entirety of Dolmenwood. You can use this to run the adventure basically. And you can see that it is a hex crawl. Each of those hexes are numbered and every single hex on this map has an entire page dedicated to what's there. It is a very dense and richly interconnected setting. Every one of these hexes has you know, NPCs, there are locations, there's magic items, there's monsters, there could be dungeons that you can explore, and they all have lore that is connected to all of the other ones. There's overall structures like road systems. There are lots of shrines that you can visit. There are these ley lines that are lined up um, with these dolmens scattered, of course, through Dolmen Wood that you can explore. There's multiple factions spread out through the wood that control different areas of it. There are major NPCs that have agendas that are trying to change the wood in one way or another. There is just a lot going on for your players to dig into. The campaign book, for example, has these regions um, that the whole forest is divided into. So we have, for example, the Aldweald and the Dwelmferg. Each of these is marked on this map that you can see right up there in the corner. There's a uh, Fever Marsh, the Highwold, the Mulch Grove. Each of these sections has its own particular history and vibe going with it. The overall feel of the campaign setting is very much mythic, uh, fairy tale fantasy. There's a lot of darkness, but there's also a lot of a whimsy and kind of a tongue in cheekness about it as well. Some of the big inspirations in include things like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell or the King of Elfland's Daughter, a lot of uh, fairy tale like fiction that uh, has fairies as these kind of otherworldly beings from another dimension and has these dark forests that you're traveling into. There's a history of the entire forest going back thousands of years, if that's something you want to dig into. On this map, we can see that there's a hundred different shrines that you can visit, each dedicated to different saints of the particular church that you can find in this wood. A lot of these saints can grant you particular spells. Yeah, we'll see a bit later how the uh, clerical system ties in with, with the saints, which is pretty interesting. There are fairy roads that allow you to shortcut and uh, jump between different parts of the woods. By entering a fairy door, you travel a little bit through the land of fairy and then out somewhere else in Dolmenwood. But that can be a perilous journey because as you travel through, there are uh, random locations that can pop up and weird things that can happen as you travel through this kind of other world on your way. Everything is done in old school essential style of being very rich with flavor, but also very dense and easy to read. Everything is very clearly laid out where you can easily reference things and find what you are looking for. Here's lots of just different uh, NPCs you can run into. There are gods of the wood. There are factions and powers that you can explore and has their motivations and who their minions are and all of that sort of thing. 
lots of great NPC illustrations. You get a very vivid sense of what this person looks like, pictures that you can show your players. A really useful feature is that it has all the relationships that the factions have to one another and how they see each other. So if you are in one faction, if you join someone and you meet another one, you know how they're gonna to respond to you. Each of the towns in Dolmenwood has its own little map right here. And it has, uh, it's all numbered as you can see up there in the corner. There are random encounters for the day and for the night. And it has uh, each of those buildings fleshed out in a nice little paragraph, very clear, very easy to read. You have Castle Brackenwold right here. Some of them are bigger than others. Uh, Cobton on the Shiver, a little seaport town, Dreg in the Shantywood Isle, they all have their own great little distinctive features that make them stand out and give you a reason for players to want to visit them. Travel is a really big deal when you are doing any kind of hex crawl, and it's especially a big deal in Dolmenwood. You can keep track of time, you know what season you're in. There are um, weather systems right here for each of the different seasons, so things are going to change over time. You can get lost. There's tons of different encounters that you can have. There's fishing systems, foraging systems, hunting systems. You can really dig into the whole process of traveling through this dark forest. There are systems for camping. There are systems for just like hanging out in taverns and finding food and drinks. It's really, really great for people who want to immerse themselves in that side of the game. Probably one of the biggest parts of the campaign book is the hexes, the hex descriptions. There's a solid 200 pages of this inside the campaign book, one page for each hex, which makes it very easy to find. Up at the top, you have the hex number. There's a little mini map so you can see where it is on the big map and you can see all of the nearby hexes. So if your players go in any direction, you know immediately where to go. That's really great. If there's a location like a hamlet, it's all broken down into all the major buildings that you might find there. Any NPCs are in these little boxes. You can immediately find them and get their description and know how to role play them. It's really impressive just flipping through all of these hexes and seeing the sheer volume of content that Gavin Norman has been creating over the last decade to fill this book. There is adventure around every corner and in every hex. You're not gonna go into a hex where there's just nothing there. There's always people to talk to and things to explore. One of the things I love best about this campaign book is the rumor system. There are a good solid D20 rumors for every major uh, city or settlement that you might find in Dolmenwood. So no matter where they go, your player's gonna walk into a town, you have tons of adventures that you can give them clues about, and they're all actually connected to nearby hexes. Not all the rumors are true, but it will point them in a particular direction and get them thinking about what they're gonna do there. Next up, we have the player's book. This is the book that you're gonna hand out to your players so they have all of the classes and races and rules that they need in order to play the game. I really love how this book includes the inspirational media uh, that was behind the scenes influencing what Dolmenwood felt like. Because if players have seen these movies or read these books, then they'll be able to get into the right headspace really quickly. So you have stuff like Gormenghast by Mervyn Peake, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, The Ladies of Grace Adieu, Lud in the Mist, which is a really great book. Uh, the Lioness Trilogy by Jack Vance, Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Uh, we have The Green Knight, which is a really great movie it's with that kind of a mythic Britain feel to it. And Labyrinth, Legend, Prince Monoke, Spirited Away, The Wicker Man, all that stuff. While the campaign book goes really in depth with all of the different locations and factions and stuff like this, the player's book has a much abbreviated form of it, which I really like. It's great that the players can immediately get a sense of the types of characters that live in Dolmenwood, the different factions and powers, but they only get like a paragraph each, enough that they have stuff to go off of. This is stuff that might be common knowledge for people living in Dolmenwood or, or who uh, recently arrived there, but it's not so much that they're gonna be spoiled uh, for all the exploration that they're gonna do later. There's a breakdown on how to create a character and an example of creating a character, which is really nice, especially for new players. How to do ability scores, alignment, advancement. It's pretty standard D&D stuff. There is some great uh, lore uh, material, like the languages of Dolmenwood, which are not your typical D&D languages, which t tend to be based on the different kinds of monsters. These are actual languages and are more related to the different factions. For example, the common tongue is called Woldish. The scriptural tongue is liturgic. This is the language of the church. And you have the Drunic tons, tongues for the uh, Drune, which is a particular faction. Uh, the fairy tongues for all of the fairies, including the things like the immortal tongue of fairy, which is like this unpronounceable alien language. We start getting into the different races here uh, called kindreds, like the Bregel, which are goat-headed folk whose horn length indicates their social standing. There's a picture of one over there. Each of these kindreds has a detailed random tables for generating lots of stuff about a character of that kindred or for an NPC. 
and they're not quite as vanilla as some of the uh, races in BXD&D or in Old School Essentials. They often have a little bit more flavor, like they have special powers, like their gaze, and the length of these guys' horns indicates their status. There's tables for that. So it just makes them a little bit more mechanically rich. Not a whole lot. It's not like 5e, but it sets them apart a little bit more. Elves in Dolmenwood are actually denizens from Fairy, this parallel realm that kind of touches ours in the forest of Dolmenwood. So they're not quite the same as your typical D&D elves, and they have things like they're vulnerable to cold iron, they're immortal, and stuff like that. Uh, we have the Grimalkin, which are mercurial feline fairies who shift between three different forms if you want to be a, a cat person. They remind me a bit of the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland. There's also humans and uh, mosslings right here and wood grues. For classes, we have things like clerics. You have enchanters who are wanderers who wield the magic of fairy. So they're not quite the same as a wizard or a cleric because uh, there is a separate magic system for fairies, which we'll look at in a little bit. There's also fighters who get a little bit more flavor than your typical BX fighter because there are combat talents, which you can gain as you level up in order to make your uh, ability to fight a little bit more varied and a little bit more strategic. There's also friars and hunters who have hunter skills, right? Here's our skill system over there on the right. We have alertness, stalking, survival, and tracking. And those are all, you know, number out of six. So you're rolling a D6 to see if those things uh, succeed. You can also be a knight and choose from one of the houses of Dolmenwood with your own particular crest. You got magicians who are, you know, like wizards, essentially. Minstrels, thieves, and then we start looking at magic. Arcane magic is pretty standard Vancean magic. And you have all of your spells here. And they're pretty much standard, although there might be a little bit of renaming here and there, but most of them are pretty similar to BX spells with some tweaks here and there. You have fairy magic, which uses runes. So those get broken into two bits. We have glamours and runes. Glamours are basically like cantrips. They're minor magics that can be used as much as you want. However, we also have runes, which are a bit like fancy magic, but much more powerful and restricted. You can see over here on the right, there's a rune usage frequency that explains how this works. If you are level one through four, then lesser runes you can cast once per day. Greater runes you can only cast once per level. And a mighty rune you can only cast once ever. And we'll see why that is when we start looking at a couple of those runes. But if you get all the way up to level 10, then you can cast these a little bit more frequently like three times a day for lesser, uh, once per day for greater, and once per year for a mighty rune. Here we have some of our glamours and some of our lesser runes and greater runes, but the mighty runes are the ones that are really fun because these are enormously powerful spells that are campaign altering possibly in some way, but oftentimes characters can only cast them once ever. So they need to be extremely careful when they decide to use these. For example, we've got eternal slumber. A mortal within range is placed into a state of stasis and eternal sleep. And you can set the conditions by which they can awake. So you can keep them locked that way basically forever. You can shut down an incredibly powerful NPC with a single rune, but be careful who you pick. You can summon a dream ship, a phantasmagoric galleon that sails down from the sky and docks as close to the caster as possible. You and your companions can get on board the ship and travel to any location in Dolmenwood. You can summon the wild hunt, a whole army of hunters, and you can tell them who they are now hunting now. So that's a great way to terrify your foes, or you can even unravel death if you want to bring back someone from the dead. Clerical magic is a lot like, you know, clerical magic from D&D, but it's called holy spells here. And they often have names tying them to particular saints because there's a hundred saints in Dolmenwood. So detect evil, uh, its prayer name is St. Wittery's Vision. And then at the bottom, there is the miracle of St. Wittery, where we learn how St. Wittery used this prayer the first time. So each of these spells are tied into the lore of the setting. There's a whole section on gear here. You got your adventuring gear, your armor and weapons, horses. You have lots of different particular hounds. If you want to get a dog, because everyone wants to get a dog, which kind of dog do you want? They're all slightly different from each other. We have things like lodgings and food. If you want details on the dishes being served in the taverns, what kind of beverages exactly, what beers, spirits, what wines. A lot of players love digging into that and just hanging out and doing the whole homey sitting by the fire thing, and Dolmenwood really accommodates that. Near the back of the book are the core rules. So the game master or the players would use this in order to understand how the game is supposed to be played. But as I mentioned, if you played BXD&D, it's basically that with a number of subsystems specifically for uh, hex crawling and camping and that sort of thing added in to make journeying more mechanically rich. The encumbrance system uses normal encumbrance or slot-based encumbrance depending on your preference. 
Hex crawling and camping have their own procedures here that you can work through, including how to build a fire, cooking, camaraderie, how to set up watches, all of that good stuff, and dealing with wandering monsters. Procedures for interacting with settlements, if you want to do that in a more structured way, and of course, for dungeon crawling and dealing with encounters. In the appendices at the back, there is a calendar for Dolmenwood because the passage of time is important. You can track things like the months of the year and the moon signs, which can each have particular effects depending on what moon is up. The nine noble families that hold sway over Dolmenwood also get descriptions. And there's an option for race as class in the back here, where you can take each of those kindreds we saw earlier and just make it its own class if you don't want to do the race separated from class thing. I really like the map at the back of the player's book, and I like how it is distinct from the official hex crawl map, because you don't see any hexes on this one. You just get a general picture of what's going on and where things are generally. This is the kind of map that you would find a traveler in Dolmenwood would actually possess. They would know roughly where the major settlements are, where the rivers are, where the roads are, but the details and the game mechanics around that would be obscured to them. So you could give the players a map like this and they could start filling stuff in as they go. Last of all, we have the monster book featuring all the weird monsters that you can find in Dolmenwood. And they all have that kind of mythic, dark fairy tale flavor that I love so much about this particular setting. You have things like the Antler Wraith, the Banshee, the Barrow Bogey. Oh, this is a really great one. It's a waif-like fairy, three feet tall, and with repulsively wrinkled brown skin, carry pots or jugs upon their shoulders in place of heads. Layer in barrow mounds, riddled with tunnels extending into fairy. So the monsters themselves also are kind of adventure hooks to other places. Not only do you have a normal stat block and it's their special abilities if they have any, almost every monster here has a table of encounters and special traits that may make them a little bit different and layers where you might find them. So they have ways to create encounters and you know larger things that you can do with them rather than just they show up and you fight them. As you can see over here with the Basilisk, this book is still a work in progress. Some of the pages are not completely finished yet and that's totally okay. It is by and large finished. You could definitely play a campaign with the material that's here already, um, but the Kickstarter campaign is, I'm sure, just to help finish everything up, pay for art, all that stuff. What's some other monsters we have here? We have centaurs, coblins, cockatrices, crookhorns, uh, deerlings, different types of droon, which was one of the, uh, the weird cult that you can find wandering around in uh, Dolmenwood. Elves, and you see elves are a little bit stranger than your typical elves. You have elf knights, elf wanderers, fairy horses, galoshers, gelatinous hulks, gloams, goblins, Grimalkins. I think by and large, the art is really fun. There's a variety of artists being used, which is kind of nice. Um, and they all nail that vibe, I think, although they do it in each uh, their own distinctive styles. What else we got? Giant psionic snails. Of course you have those. Spectres, sprites, talking animals, trolls, corrupt unicorns, uh, wicker giants, whites, witches, lots of different types of witches. There's wood grooves, wrong uncles, and worms, which are sort of the uh, dragons of Dolmenwood. And I love how they were divided into the four humors from classical medicine, because you have black bile worms, blood, phlegm, and yellow bile worms, which is really fun. I just love that so much. At the back, we have rules for normal humans and some rules for generating adventuring parties, because there should be rival adventuring parties in Dolmenwood. It's always fun to run into another group of four, you know, people, a fighter, a thief, a cleric, and a wizard, and they're doing their own thing, and they're heading towards that dungeon just like you are. Who's going to get there first? Are you going to join forces? Are you going to fight them? It adds a lot of uh, fun tension. Some quick stats for normal animals. You have uh, some trade goods. Fairy trade goods and mundane trade goods, herbal and occult trade goods for players who like to collect stuff and try and sell it. And that is about it. This is an incredibly complete setting. Not only is it a setting, it is a rule system. It has new classes. It has new races. It has new everything. It's a whole little world in there and it tells you how to explore it. And it is dense with things to encounter. Uh, once this book comes out in physical form, my plan is to make this my ongoing home campaign, just because I cannot wait to dig into all of the lore of Dolmenwood and find all of its secrets. If it looks cool to you too, remember to go to the description down there below and click on the link to the Kickstarter. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.